All right, KMR, we're going to talk rotary. We are back with some BRAP, and I'm going to call this a little KMR technical discussion on side seals with it also being a Mazda Tricks video. We're going to say this is also a little bit of Mazda Tricks discussion because we got these brand new parts from Mazda Tricks. And uh, I think a lot of the times people are wondering how to set up side seals. Um, what side seals they should be getting. Um, and there may not always be an absolutely known quantity of, of the variations that are supplied from OEM or aftermarket suppliers. There's some variations out there. Mazda Tricks, KMR, um, Racing Beat, a lot of shops rely on this part number right here. And this would be for your FC3S and your FD3S or your Cosmo. So basically all of your RX-7 motors between 1986 and 1999. Um, and this would be the US part number. Um, I believe it's also a Japanese part number and available part number around the world. Now, I like this part number and this side seal because it is over length. So like in most cases with RX-7s, you're gonna hand trim these but it's not excessively over length. Now there are some shops out there that sell an OEM seal and it's cheaper, but it's really long and that actually makes it hard to work with. So I like what Mazda Tricks carries. They carry this one. Um, it's just slightly longer than your OEM grooves. So with it being important that you cut your side seals just like you would uh, trim your piston rings, it's a similar idea you're making proper fitment, fitment of your combustion chamber. Your side seals gotta fit properly between your corner seals. Um, so the corner seals, side seal, and apex seal can seal off that pocket. Now, there is wear occurring between the side seal and the corner seal, and there are Mazda factory specs that you want your side seals within. I think there's confusion because some people will set side seals on the loose end of the Mazda spectrum. And you have to understand that if you're starting with a loose fitment, but it's still within spec, that means you have a shorter running time or shorter wearable time as that seal moves, goes up and downs, expands with heat for that seal to wear before it's out of spec. So when you're dealing with shops, when you're dealing with your own rebuilds, try to get those side seals cut within that Mazda tolerance but on the tighter side of that tolerance. Not too tight, not too loose. It's very important, actually. Um, now, when you're cutting side seals, I think this is also an issue. I like to use a little square barrel, squared up barrel, stone bit in a drill press or an end mill. And what that allows me to do is bring this stone, which is square itself on, the, on that edge, and has a radius that's almost the same as the corner seal. It allows me to keep that side seal trim as I'm cutting the side seal to the proper radius and proper square angle that the seal is going to wear at. Now, what I see a lot of the times is people will spend a lot of time cutting a side seal, but what they end up with is a weird round beveled or squared end that doesn't actually match the side seal at all. Now that's going to instantly wear in more aggressively and cause more of a compression loss than what Mazda provides. The Mazda end is actually a really nice cut. It's just slightly square, meaning a flat edge um, compared to the corner seal, but it's nice and square. It's nice and radius. It's properly trimmed. So the builder's goal with their brand new side seals, get yourself a junk rotor, cut a little area out so you can drop your side seal in the groove, get yourself a drill press. We sell these little bits, they're on the KMR store. I know they're on the eBay store, I think I have them on the KMR store as well. And that way when you're cutting your side seals, you're able to not only create a nice square end, but it's also going to match the radius of the corner seal and you don't run into improper fitment, binding, loss of compression too soon, components that wear out too fast, 
all of the above. When you're looking for reliability, performance, and good builds, um, you want to make sure you're landing on the tight end of those Mazda specs. You want to make sure everything fits and moves properly. Um, and if you're dealing with an engine assembly shop or a engine builder, they should know the specs and they should be able to tell you how they're cutting the side seals. And if they just say, oh, I was doing a little hand trim and trust me, uh, the fitment's fine, I don't, I don't check the specs, then that's probably not the best sign that you're going to get the highest level of build quality. Um, and there are lots of different techniques out there. But I think it's always a good idea to do due diligence, understand what you're getting. And in this case, if you're doing it yourself, an understanding of what seals um, equate to easy building and equate to easy cutting, um, what are OEM and how to work with them. So I hope that's been a nice little Mazda Tricks corner combined with KMR Tech Talk. Um, we're going to try to do more of this. We'll introduce the products that uh, we work with and sell and the techniques of how to work with them. I think I'll do a follow-up video of uh, this bit in use and how we're actually cutting the seals. But I figured we'd start with the discussion of, hey, how to use a side seal. Thanks for watching. KMR, let me know if you have any questions.